A person showing pleasure at a sin he has committed is also considered a cause for the enormity of the sin to be greater. If a person, for example, blags and boasts about how he cheated somebody, how he cheated somebody else in a business dealing, he is compounding the seriousness of that sin by his action. Number six. A sin is also made greater by exposing it and spreading the news of one sin to others. The Prophet ﷺ stated, <coughs> the Prophet وسلم, stated, All of my nation are to be forgiven except those who publicize their sins. Publicizing the sins includes a person doing something during the night, and then in the morning, although Allah had kept that act concealed for him, he says, Oh, so and so, last night I did such and such. He spent the night being concealed by his Lord, and in the morning he uncovered what Allah had kept concealed for him. Recorded by Al Bukhari and Muslim. Number seven. The enormity of a sin is also greater when there is less drive causing the person to commit that sin. In such cases, there is very little excuse for the person. He was not in a state where he was so <coughs> overcome by desire that he could not control himself. This is what the Prophet وسلم, stated. The Prophet ﷺ stated, There are three categories of people to whom Allah will not speak any pleasing words, for whom Allah will not cleanse of their sins, and to whom Allah will not look, and they shall have a grievous punishment. They are an old man who commits illegal sexual intercourse, a lying king, and an arrogant, impoverished person. Recorded by Muslim. Continue. Continue. Allah obliterates that evil, and Allah does not put anyone to destruction except for one who is to be destroyed. <coughs> Another Qudsi hadith in Sahih Muslim states يقول الله عز وجل من جاء بالحسنة فله عشر أمثالها وأزيد ومن جاء بالسيئة فجزاؤه سيئة مثلها أو أغفر Allah says if anyone does a good deed he gets ten like it, or I increase that number. If anyone does an evil deed, its recompense is one similar to it, or I forgive it. In this hadith, Qudsi, one sees how merciful Allah deals with evil deeds. They are either to be counted as one evil deed, without any addition or multiplication of it, or Allah will forgive or wipe away those deeds. Allah wipes away evil deeds through various means, such as repentance, following up the evil deed with a good deed, and so forth. If one considers how merciful Allah deals with deeds, one will realize that the only ones who will be destroyed are those who destroy themselves and who truly deserve to be destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records every evil deed as just one. If a person decides to do an evil deed and then does not do it, it is recorded as one good deed. If a person does a good deed, it is multiplied for him. It is multiplied at least ten times to a multitude of times. 
If a person's evil deeds outweigh his good deeds, then he must be doing great acts of evil, or evil to the amount of at least ten times the good he does. If someone is of that nature, he is truly deserving to be destroyed by being sent to the hellfire. The companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu is quoted to have said, Woe to the one whose single acts of evil outweigh his ten times multiple of single good deeds. Other points related to this hadith. Al Tabari noted that this hadith is evidence that the recording angels even record what a person is determined to do in his heart. He said that there are some who claim that the recording angels only record the outwards or visible deeds, but this hadith is an argument against them. This is another hadith like hadith number one in this collection that demonstrates the importance of having a good intention. A person will have recorded for himself good deeds simply because of his intention. Hence, once again, his good intentions can take him beyond what he actually what his actual deeds might be. Based on the previous point, a Muslim should try to always have the intention to do good. When he contemplates to himself, he should consider doing good, de- good things. When that contemplation turns into a decision to do the act, he will be rewarded for that decision, even if the end, even if he ends up not doing the act. Furthermore, the continually the continually present intention to do good deeds should, Allah willing, turn into the actual doing of more good, de- good acts. <clears throat> Allah does not mention how much He may multiply deeds, nor does He specify which deeds are multiplied by only 10 or 700 or more than that. Al-Qari states that as mentioned of exhortation, it is wiser or more effective to leave the reward unknown to the doer. It is sufficient for the doer to know that there is a great reward, but he does not have to know exactly what it is. This approach can be found in in other hadith and in the Quran. For example, Allah says, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Which means, no person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy as a reward for what they used to do. Surah Al-Sajda, verse 17. This hadith is further evidence that Allah's mercy and his willingness to reward override his anger for the performance of evil. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَمَّا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْخَلْقُ كَتَبَ فِي كِتَابِهِ وَهُوَ يَكْتُبُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ وَهُوَ وَضْعٌ عِنْدَهُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ إِنَّ رَحْمَتِي تَغْلِبُ غَضَبِي The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When Allah created the creation, He recorded this in His book, and He prescribed for Himself, and He placed it with Himself upon the throne. Verily, my mercy overrides my anger. Recorded by Al-Bukhari. This fact is one of the greatest blessings for mankind. Every individual should think about how much how much mercy Allah has decreed for himself, while no one is able to force Allah to make such a decree. This aspect alone should make anyone who has decided to commit an evil deed, which is displeasing to the most merciful, change his mind, and not commit that deed, as why should anyone want to do something displeasing to the Lord, who is so merciful? Allah's multiplication of one's good deeds and his lack of multiplication of evil deeds, evil deeds is an obvious manifestation of Allah's mercy and grace. In fact, Al-A'ini, Al-A'ini wrote, If it were not for that great bounty and grace, no one would enter paradise for the, serv- for the servants. 
evil deeds are greater than their good deeds. But Allah has been gentle to his servants and he multiplies for them their good deeds but not their evil deeds. It seems Allah knows best that this hadith is in reference only to the physical acts that a person can perform such as adultery, stealing and so forth. There is a consensus that there are some acts that are held against a person whether the person acted upon them or not. This would include acts such as pride, arrogance, envy, acting for show, and so forth. Similarly, if a person is having doubts about Allah or the truthfulness of the Prophet wasallam, even if he does not act upon those doubts, he will, he will be held accountable for them. In fact, such doubts and thoughts are tantamount tantamount to disbelief. Included in this category of sinful thoughts of the heart are loving what Allah dislikes or are disliking what Allah has approved of. Allah's grace, which is brought forth in this hadith, has also been alluded to in the following verse of the Quran. <laughs> لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت <coughs> which means Allah bears not a soul beyond what it can bear he gets reward for that deed which he has earned and he is punished for that evil which he has earned Surah Al-Baqarah verse 286 in this verse Allah has used the word kasaba for what the person earns and iktasaba for what will be held against the person. In most English translations, like the above from Khan and Al Hilali, there is no distinction made between these two terms. However, there is a difference between the two words. The first word implies what one earns even with very little effort. This word include this would include what a person decides to do and then he does and then he does not do it. He still has he still has earned one good deed. The second word, which is what one is going to be held responsible for, implies no effort. In other words, as in this hadith, if a person simply decides to do an evil deed, but he does not go out and do it, that will not be held against him at all. Summary of the hadith. Allah has decreed what the good deeds and the evil deeds are. He has recorded the deeds of mankind or has ordered the angels to record the deeds of mankind in the manner described in this hadith. First, if a person truly decides to do a good deed and then ends up not doing it, Allah will have recorded for him one good deed. Second, if the person actually performs the good deed, it will be multiplied for him by a multiple of ten, up to a multiple of whatever Allah in His mercy and grace wills. Third, if a person decides to do an evil deed and then, for the sake of Allah, he changes his way and does not do that deed, Allah will record for him one good deed. Fourth, if a person actually performs the evil deed, Allah will only record one evil deed against him. Such is the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this type of reckoning, only those who truly deserve to be destroyed and punished will be destroyed. As we said, again, Sheikh Jamal Jazallah Khair picked a quote from Al Aini, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Al Imam Al Aini, one of the people who explained Al-Bukhari. So, Umdak Al-Qari, Sheikh Sayyid Al-Bukhari, Imam Al-Aini, and he was in the time of the other uh, uh, Imam, which is uh, Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani. Uh, both of them lived in Egypt about the same time. Uh, that, as Al-Aini said, that without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, 